committed during the Israeli onslaught against Gaza at the turn of the year. This enables arrest warrants to be issued against these officers and they would be arrested in case they enter certain countries. Israeli Foreign Ministry has confirmed the report and says it's working to prevent such efforts. Earlier in the month, UN Human Rights Council endorsed a report by war crimes prosecutor Richard Goldstone. The report accuses both Israel and Hamas of war crimes in Gaza. It gives both sides six months to conduct credible investigations or face possible prosecution at The Hague. Well, more than 1,400 Palestinians, many of them women and children, were killed in the Israeli onslaught. For more insight into this, we're joined by Edward Spanas. He's a legal affairs editor with the Executive Intelligence Review, joining us from Washington. Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, there are reports that Israel is trying to create uh, somehow a task force to counter the Golderstone report about the Gaza war. Uh, what are the legal consequences for Israel? Well, the Goldstone report recommends uh, that Israel conduct its own independent investigation. So there have been reports that after the UN Human Rights Commission referred the matter to the UN Security Council, that Israel would try and conduct its own investigation as a way of heading off or preventing action by the United Nations. But I don't think there's any investigation they undertake will not have much credibility at this point. Well, Israel used sophisticated weapons in its war on Gaza, weapons which it had received from the United States. Now, in case of any illegal action against Israel, how likely would the U.S. be held accountable? Well, there, that's an interesting question because, in fact, the U.S. provision of weapons are, is done with the condition that these not be used in, in an offensive manner and not be used against civilians. So it is, in fact, a violation of U.S. law, but the U.S. officials knew full well that this was being done. And in that sense, those involved in providing sophisticated weapons to Israel were themselves complicit in war crimes against the Palestinian people. Well, now the Gold Goldstone report was endorsed by the United Nations Human Rights Council. That's why... Uh, permanent members of the Security Council are re seemingly reluctant to take the report into consideration. Just how reliable and credible is the United Nations for seeing to such acts of, against humanity? Well, the problem is that with the United Nations on this and the International Criminal Court is that the ICC, for example, has been targeting largely African leaders. So it's generally third world leaders uh, that are targeted by this. And that's what makes it kind of interesting uh, that now you have a move against Israel on this and also a move to assert universal jurisdiction, which is the legal concept, which means that a suspect can be arrested in any country, whether or not the actual crimes were committed in that country or not. Um, so this has been used very frequently against those targeted by the West, and now it's being turned uh, against Israel, justifiably. Well, now, uh, the Golderson report gives both sides, Hamas and uh, Israel, six months to conduct credible investigations. Just why isn't Israel uh, cooperating as much? Because, uh, as it claims, it's not being the, it hadn't been the aggressor in the war. <laughs> It claims it hasn't been, I'm sorry. It, it claims that it, it, that it wasn't the aggressor in the war on Gaza. Oh, well, that's preposterous because Israel claimed to be defending itself against Hamas missiles. But every time there was a ceasefire between the Palestinians and Israel, Israel broke the ceasefire, generally by a targeted assassination of an Hamas leader, which usually killed many civilians along with it. And then, predictably, Hamas would respond. So Israel set the whole thing up. They were just waiting to provoke an incident where they could attack Gaza. It was clearly well prepared and well thought out ahead of time. So there's no question but that Israel was the aggressor. And this claim about self-defense 
Nobody believes. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Edward Spanos, legal affairs editor with the Executive Intelligence Review, joining us from Washington. Many thanks for your thoughts there, sir.